What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I'm going to be breaking down and giving you guys my reaction to some of the latest and greatest Transformers reveals, especially when it does come round to this pretty awesome Walmart exclusive subline. Now, before all of that, I do very quickly want to touch base with the first out four live streams, which did drop today to celebrate the whopping 40th anniversary. And I won't lie to you guys, what an excruciatingly painful watch. For the first 10 minutes, the designers literally spoke about everything which was not the main line of Legacy United in studio series. They pretty much spent a solid 10 minutes talking about metal pins, die cast coins, t-shirts. It was just an absolute snooze fest. And when it did finally come round to the reveals, they were pretty much figures which we have previously seen shown off to us via Amazon themselves. So they definitely need to massively pull their finger out next week, especially when you kind of consider that it has been since September that we last saw a full-blown Legacy United fan stream. And Legacy United Wave 2 and studio series figures are already being found at store shelves. So we need some pre-orders, we need some official information, and let's not forget, we saw an official reveal for the Origin Cybertronian Wheeljack way back in December, yet that figure is yet to go up for pre-order. So I want my pre-order has, bro, please pull your fingers out next week and deliver us the fan stream which we deserve. We have been waiting way too long for some official mainline news. But setting my small rant off to the side, let's very quickly go through some news which I am slightly late to the game on. So last week, there was an official drop for the upcoming Legacy United Doom and Destruction 2 pack. This I believe is scheduled to be an upcoming Amazon exclusive. So the first one is the Mayhem Attack Squad Chop Shop and Barrage. So two really awesome Insecticons. You know, I was super surprised to see just how much retooling is going on when it does come to the robot modes and even the beast modes appear to be near enough spot on matches to their actual character design. So these make me super hyped for the upcoming Venom. You know, at this point I'm kind of anticipating these guys more than the actual original G1 trio. These look awesome and they also surprisingly include Malia's Minor Taurus. I believe that's how it's pronounced, but it's a pretty cool battle master. You know, it's packing some decent blast effects. So those are two Amazon exclusive figures, which I desperately want to pick up. But then the next two pack, I'm going to be honest, guys, does leave a lot to be desired, especially for someone like myself, who is a diehard Transformers Prime fan. So this here is a Prime Universe breakdown and a windsweeper. Now, breakdown, unfortunately, is the laziest ass repaint you could ever get. It's pretty much the legacy bulkhead, which let's all be honest, was kind of a mid tier figure at best with a brand new head sculpt and pretty much the hammer accessory which we did see included with the Amazon exclusive bulkhead. So this is super depressing to look at. I mean this doesn't resemble breakdown in the slightest and for those who weren't able to track down that original very elusive Transformers Prime breakdown this absolutely sucks because I'm going to be honest guys and I'm going to be completely upfront. this doesn't hold a candle in comparison to that original version. So I'm kind of hoping that this is the last massive disservice that we are going to be seeing to some of those Transformers Prime designs because I thought we had left that behind us especially when it came around to Skyquake and Dreadwing and even the most recent Thundertron. So yeah, this ain't looking too great at all. But on the other hand, Windsweeper doesn't appear to be a bad repaint slash retool of the Legacy Needle Nose. To be honest, I do think it looks even better than the Legacy Breakdown. And despite my disappointment with Hasbro's fan stream today, you guys can trust the Karatomi to pull out all of the punches when it does come to reveals because they have just dropped one of the most anticipated Transformers Studio Series core class figures for this year, and it is a Cybertronian Bumblebee movie Starscream. Now, I've been super excited to see how Hasbro would pull off this design in a considerably smaller scale class because I thought the Voyager class was awesome, but it's definitely a very complex design, especially when it comes around to that Tetrajet alt mode, and damn, did they absolutely knock it out of the park. The robot mode I think looks brilliant. I mean very accurate to how Starscream unfortunately briefly appeared in the Bumblebee movie and this is going to make for a great companion piece to kind of stack up alongside the core class Shockwave. This guy is packing that kind of triple barreled Null Ray which again is super movie accurate and as we check out the jet mode surprisingly this doesn't look terrible either. I mean upon first glance I was kind of thinking have Hasbro once again laid more towards the concept art because in some ways I could see this perhaps passing as being an earth mode based Starscream because the kind of bit on the the underside is nowhere near as exaggerated as the Voyager class, but it's still a really awesome core class. And with the release of this guy, I'm hoping that now means we can expect to see more Bumblebee movie characters kind of shrunk down to this core class scale. It would be so wicked to see like an Optimus Prime, a Soundwave, and you guys can bet that we're going to be seeing Skywarp, Thundercracker, maybe even the cone heads out of this mold like we did from the Voyager class release. So definitely, I'm super excited to pick this one up and kind of stack it up alongside some of the other core classes, especially that Kingdom Star screen 
stream, but Takara Tomi never stopped there because they also dropped some super fresh images of the upcoming Titan class tidal wave. Now this I think has to be one of the best looking titans Hasbro have ever put out. This thing literally accomplishes all of the modes and more that we saw in the original Armada TV show, but one that I want to touch base on more than anything would be the burning Megatron combined mode. So they are literally going to take a titan class, have detachable pieces, which can combine with a considerably smaller leader class. That is so freaking cool. You know, he may just be one of the best looking titan figures that Hasbro have brought out in the past few years and probably one of the few, which honestly I do think is worth the full retail price. He is looking sick. Now, back to that live stream which did officially take place today. Hasbro didn't kind of leave us out to dry because they did give us technically an official reveal of a figure that we haven't actually seen, although technically we kind of have. This is a Studio Series 86, Voyager Class, Blaster and Eject. So, it's kind of new, but then at the same time, we've seen this years ago. And to be honest, the differences between this Studio Series version to the original Kingdom release aren't too different. So, they've pretty much swapped out the transparent plastic, as we are seeing more and more with some of their latest reissues. I'm hoping hoping this isn't an ongoing trend where Hasbro are going to give us a Transformer and then a couple of months down the line are going to retweak it to kind of phase out those clear pieces. I'm hoping they just do that from the offset going forwards. But I will say the cassette deck does appear to be way more tune accurate in comparison to the kind of transparent blue that we did see first time round. And Eject this time is full blown solid plastic. None of that clear plastic crap, which whilst looks awesome, unfortunately doesn't stand the test of time. So honestly guys, just stick with that Kingdom release. The differences are very far and in between and you know, this does really retail for a whopping $35 and to be fair that is money which I do think could be better spent elsewhere so if you already own the original definitely give this a miss but if you are a diehard collector like myself then maybe this is a blast worth checking out. And if you guys thought some of those reveals were super juicy, now you're going to see the main reason why I was kind of hacked off not to see any Legacy United reveals as part of today's fan stream, because already at retail, we are seeing the upcoming Cybertron Universe Voyager Class Starscream, and he looks straight up incredible. I mean, wow. I think out of all of the figures to be released as part of this wave, this was the one that I was most interested to see as to how exactly they were going to pull it off, because it is kind of an ambitious design for Starscream. You know, had you told me a few years back that this design would make its way into the main line, I would have been convinced that it would have been a leader class. You know, it's quite a large design for the character, especially when it comes to those shoulder wings, the shoulder pads, and especially that jet mode. But to say that they knocked it out of the park, I think is a straight up understatement. That robot mode looks incredible. He's even packing the blades. He will come with that kind of purple translucent blaster. But as you spin the box round to the back, to my surprise, this guy will even be packing a full blown planet key, which we haven't seen since those original Cybertron days, which I think is nuts. And as we check out the jet mode. Again, pretty much flawless. Hasbro have pulled out all of the bells and whistles to make this literally the best version of this character that we've so far seen. And to be fair, all of the Cybertron characters, whether it be Override or Metroplex, or even that kind of Galaxy Upgrade Optimus Prime that we saw way back as part of the Siege toy line, were pretty faithful recreations of the original character design. So I'm hoping this is a universe which we can see more and more of when it does come to the main line, because this Starscream is a straight 10 out of 10. And I think right now has the potential to to be the best figure to be released as part of wave 2. And now we turn to the icing on the cake, the creme de la creme, Walmart actually pulled out all of the stops today. They gave us four reveals, which Hasbro officially failed to do. These are four characters for their upcoming Star Raiders subline, and damn, are some of these absolutely packing a punch. So up first, here we have the Voyager class Ferrak. I believe that's how it is officially pronounced. This is pretty much a straight up repaint slash minor retool of the Kingdom Cyclonus, although what a stunning mold. Still one of my favorites from that War for Cybertron lineup, and it looks just as good here, fully redecoed in kind of grey and white. You know, the new head sculpt, I think two is looking pretty sharp, and I love how he also includes two brand new blasters, which can be detached and can be put on the shoulders. So, that's definitely a pretty sweet looking mold. I mean, check out that jet mode. Next to zero undercarriage kibble. Truly one of the best jet formers I think Hasbro have put out in so many years. But, Ferak wasn't even the star of the show when it came here to the Star Raiders subline, because the next character is surprisingly looking pretty good, especially again for a Walmart exclusive. This is official titled as being a Star Raider Cannonball. Now, as we all know, this is directly inspired by the Cybertron universe, much like that Starscream, and for a repaint slash retool of the Legacy Crankcase, I think this is by far the best reuse that we've so far seen for this mold. You know, the robot mode is looking surprisingly pretty impressive. I also really like how they kind of gave him the fake doors on the shoulders, you know, to kind of recreate his original design. These won't play a role at all when it comes to transformation, but that is a really nice attention to detail. They've also given him that kind of swap out claw 
floor attachment, which I thought was really cool. And it seems like they've completely modified the actual chess unit. So in some ways, am I crazy? Or could we maybe see this even repainted into an animated universe version of Soundwave? I can totally see that. But as we check out the vehicle mode, you know, again, despite being a retool, this is surprisingly looking pretty sharp. And what is that I spot on the roof? Yes, guys, once again, it is the return of the Cyber Planet Key. That is so damn cool, especially as unlike Starscream, this is a deluxe class. So that is just going to be such a great accessory to kind of see return in 2024. I will say they have slightly stylized the kind of skull emblem that this guy is renowned for having. And it doesn't look as good as the original in my opinion, but still not bad. He's looking really awesome. But the next character was definitely one that I was the most excited to see as to how they would approach when it comes to a deluxe class. This is a 2015 Robots in Disguise Filch. And she is looking killer. So it seems like she's going to be a massive retool of the Transformers Kingdom Air Razor. And to be honest, now I think about it, I couldn't think of a better mold to kind of suit this character. She's looking really awesome. You know, the brand new paint details are looking sick. I also love the new retooled elements such as the chest piece, the head sculpt. She appears to have these brand new wing accessories, which do actually become the wings of the base mode, which I thought was really awesome. And as we check out that base mode, what a sick mechanized falcon or eagle. I'm not quite sure on the specific beast that this is supposed to be, but very accurate again to how she did appear in that 2015 TV show for a Walmart exclusive. She is looking really damn awesome, but once again, isn't even the star of the show, at least for myself, because the next character is one that I have been anticipating ever since we got a glimpse of those junkie on slap bang and center as part of the Legacy Evolution poster. This is, I guess, technically the animated universe deluxe class lockdown. We knew this guy was coming, especially when we did see the release of the Legacy Axle Grease, and wow, does he look for the most part pretty awesome. Now, I have seen some comments online, you know, should have this guy been a brand new mold? Should have this been a Voyager to kind of match the scale of the original Deluxe? And in some ways, I am kind of in that camp, you know, I do wish maybe they could have made him a little bigger, but to be fair, this mold suits him so damn well, especially when it does come to the vehicle mode, and there is way more than meets the eye going on with this design. So, as we check out the head sculpt, that isn't specifically animated based. In my opinion, this kind of strays more into the Revenge of the Fallen Deluxe class territory, especially when you kind of check out the mouthpiece. So I guess in some ways, this guy could maybe even fit in to a studio series concept art series. And at least for myself, despite how awesome it will be to kind of stack this guy up against some of the legacy animated characters, I think he's also going to fit in beautifully with some of those Revenge of the Fallen studio series deluxes, especially the likes of Ratchet and Sideswipe. So as we check out the weapon loadout, it appears to be the same as Axel Grease. So we retain the same engine block, which I guess in some ways kind of doubles as the EMP, which he savagely nicks from Ratchet in the old animated TV show. And he will come pack in with his iconic hook accessory, which again has been really nicely redecoed. And as we check out the vehicle mode, you know, as I mentioned previously, I think this suits this character down to a T. So I can totally see why they did decide to choose this mold for an animated lockdown because the vehicle mode is looking so incredibly brutal, super savage, and is once again an update, which I have been after for so many years. I literally think it has been since that kind of studio series Age of Extinction lockdown that we last saw anything officially produced for this character. So it's going to be really awesome to finally see a brand new mainline lockdown. And at least for myself, it doesn't disappoint. You know, I was expecting this to be a root of Axel Grease and it has turned out even better in my opinion, especially as they have slightly more inspired that head sculpt on the Revenge of the Fallen design. So this Star Raider subline is so far looking super strong and it makes me super excited to see as to what we can expect from that leader class Thundertron. We very recently saw a Voyager Thundertron as part of the main line. I am wondering what the leader Thundertron for the Star Raider subline is exactly going to look like. So those pretty much wrap up all of the official reveals that I wanted to discuss today. I would love to get your guys thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you guys think? I want to thank you all so much for watching and until my next video, transform and roll out.